Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Downtime with Downstar, episode 202. And today we're here with Philip and Jesse Robles, Garage RCR. Guys, what's going on? What awesome, up? dude. Dude, thank, thank you guys for being here, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's thanks cool. for having us. Yeah, of course, of course. A little Tuesday evening action. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, yeah, yeah, do you, <laughs> exactly. Do you guys? Uh, Brian and Hasport's like right around the corner, and they have that midnight oil event going on. He's literally like, like you know, less than a hundred meters from here. We're right next to uh, Hasport here. In the uh, VTech Alley. We're what's called? We're what you call VTech Alley. Yeah. So, we're in a series of garages that are. There's a lot of Honda. There's a lot of Honda stuff. There's a lot of super. super it mean, kind of used to be. Now it's like yeah, yeah everything, but it's still V Tech out. Got yeah, you. It'll, it'll all be tech out. I love it, man. Yeah. So uh, if you guys can just give us a quick brief uh, breakdown of who you are and what you do. Jesse, go. Me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm this guy's uh, son. My name's Jesse. Um, uh, I'm uh, actually a bartender. On this, on this, well, I, I'm a bartender slash uh, uh, now kind of grease monkey mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I bartend a couple days a week, and then um, I also just do I take customer cars, um, and I, I do pretty much everything besides engine builds. Um, I'll do I'll do like like mild modifications, no roll cages, and no paint and body, but everything else, you know. Uh, and uh, I have I love Hondas. I've had a bunch of them, um, but now I I, uh, I have a I have a drift car. Oh, nice! That, 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 um, yeah, I have a drift car now, uh, and uh, I so I love drifting. Love it, man. No, I mean that's that's where it all that's where it all came from. He's been he's kind of he's kind of giving you the short the short on that, but he's been drifting cars since we were in Okinawa. You know, like. He's been drifting cars for over 20 years. You know? I love it, man. We'll definitely dig into that. I uh, I love drifting, man. If just just out of all the automotive sports that there are, I, I wish I could drift for sure. That looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, so so for you, Phil, uh, would you say that your claim to fame is the, the famous EG? Uh. I would say so. I mean, if, if it wasn't probably for that car, I'd be just like, you know, I'm, I'm a regular, I'm a regular dude, but I'm an uh, auto, uh, you know, auto sports enthusiast. I started with the EG way back in the day. I mean, I tracked that car religiously probably for more than 10 years. Wow. Uh, so, you know, when people, people often they'll come to me and they'll go, Hey man, when are you going to come back to the track? And I'm like, dude, uh, I did that for like 10 years. I'm, I'm allowed to have a break, kind of reset, work on a couple of other projects that we've been doing. And we'll dive into that later. We'll dive into that later on yeah. where uh, the EG went from being my, my track car, my dedicated track car to turning it into a Pandem wide body uh, K24 power boosted car that we took to SEMA back in 2017 and we won the Grand Prismo award with it. So that was sort of a life-changing event for us because all of a sudden you've got this car that you've got to, you have to protect until Gran Turismo gets their job done, which is not a fast process yeah. because they have to do a scan on, which took probably almost a year, yeah, a year and a half. Yeah. And then probably near, almost a year after that, we get the full sound check on it. So it hasn't been that long uh, late in 2019 that we finally got everything done. So all the data has been, all the data has turned over to, um, Gran Turismo. So, uh, they keep telling us maybe towards the end of the year, I know there's a new PlayStation coming out. There's a new Gran Turismo coming out. So look for the garage RCR civic to be in that, in that new game. Wow. Congratulations, man. Thank you, you know, I, Thank I remember, uh, that SEMA, 2017 SEMA, when the car won the uh, the, the Gran Turismo Award, 
So let's uh, I, we're gonna be all over the place, man. But it, but it's okay. You know, I want to I want to know about this feeling. You, you can stuff, whatever you, what, you want. Definitely, to man. So looks like yeah, I, I got I got a little notes just just to ta- touch on. But uh, I like to freestyle it, you know. So yeah, yeah. So Dude, about sure. uh, SEMA, I know that everybody always has the uh, you know the goal to actually go to SEMA, uh, have their car there, and you know that's an accomplishment in its own which it's rare to even do that it's rare to have a spot at SEMA and just to to have your car parked outside you know so you actually did that had it parked inside and you were able to to take home this prestigious award so yeah at the Mackin booth okay we're really in a booth we're in the hallway yeah 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 in the hallway yeah i remember that we're connected to the the hallway (laughs) so if you guys can let's let's just paint the picture of deciding that okay this is going to be a goal to take the car to SEMA and then the road along the way it really really wasn't i mean to like and, and not not to like discredit like we had no intentions of bringing it really um uh matt at icb actually contacted us because mackin contacted him and they wanted a civic um and then, uh, uh, so that's kind of like how we got connected because actually my dad and I had the car all torn apart. We were actually uh, uh, doing the turbo on it. And then we get, you know, hit with this opportunity. So of course we jumped on it, like, absolutely. Yeah. So we had to actually turn it all back to NA. Um, the car was pretty hammered from, from track abuse. So uh, 11's paint and fiber, my friends right down the street, we had it all repainted. And then um, uh, 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 Volk sent us a set of awesome TE 37s, and um, and and uh, and so yeah, so that, that's kind of like it, it kind of it kind of just hit us like really fast, you know, like like because uh, um, we I mean n- n- like not that we're we love the car show scene, but just it wasn't it's never kind of like a priority really, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I mean, right? I mean, it, it was well. It was a lot to take on because I mean, it was. Yeah. Uh, Jesse and I, Jesse and I, had, uh, very recently done. Uh, we uh, upgraded. We did the white body kit on it, the the pandem yeah. kit on it. So we actually tracked it with the pandem kit for a little while. We didn't paint it or prep it because we wanted to see if we were going to tear it up. Gotcha. You know, before we actually went. They sent it to 11s again. Rubbing, you know. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so we kind of kind of tested the car for a while. So we had some damp, you know, had a little minor chips and stuff like that, but um, nothing that, uh, excuse me, nothing that 11s couldn't, uh, couldn't take care of for us, you know. But it was, I'll be honest with you, it's a SEMA, and I know that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of your audience out there that's very aware of what happens to when you prepare a car for SEMA, that's a, like a no joke, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's a head down, take care of everything. Hopefully the car will run because a lot of the cars that go there don't. Uh, they kind of over, they kind of overthink what they're going to try to get done, and the timeline doesn't allow you to actually accomplish those goals. Yeah. Where our goal was to have a car that was done, painted, running, so that we could take it to SEMA, and not have to push it around. And we made it. Yeah. We made it, and literally, uh, 11's painted the car. We've said we've we've uh, said this time and time again. 11's painted the car with probably 48 hours. Yeah. It was finished before we went to SEMA. That's what we're saying. We, like in the hall, I'm kind of glad it was in the hallway where I had a breeze because the car kind of still smelled like fresh paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, yeah. So before Seriously. you guys got the the heads up of okay, this would we're gonna take it to SEMA. What was the the time frame? Like like three weeks, <laughs> summertime. No, we, we kind of got we kind of got a little bit of a notification in the summer, but we we're like thinking that it wasn't gonna happen. Oh, got no, you, got right. you. It was kind of like Matt was going, well, do you want to go to SEMA? You know, because I've got a spot in SEMA if yeah. you want to go there. And we're like, you know, gave them the yeah, reluctant, sure, sure yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, sure, the car's all torn apart in the garage. And we're like, yeah, we can do that. But uh, I think things got really, really serious about a month out. It was about a month out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. About, about a month out because, uh, you know, that timeline, you're waiting for the summer to kind of pass because it's hot as hell in Phoenix. 
and you you get tired of working on cars in the driveway when it's 100 110 degrees yeah. outside you know so you're kind of praying for cold weather cooler <laughs> weather so and get things done you know because we didn't have the shop back then yeah. it was we we're still working out of a two-car garage then yeah wow but, but you know it was um it was like you know we've told the story a few times and it was like right down to the last minute we were actually working on the car till three in the morning before load-in day and uh, we had a bunch of friends of ours that were helping us put this car together and one of my friends and i uh one of my friends and i and the family they're all helping us do this saying i don't know man are we going to make this so they uh jesse and company kind of said dad you need to kind of go get an hour's worth of sleep so i went and crashed out for a little while we loaded the car in and then another friend of mine and I left left our house at like four in the morning for I believe a ten o'clock load in, and we made it there literally with with twenty five minutes to spare. It was great. And hey, that it sounds like great. the typical and SEMA never story. Again. Never again, man. <laughs> yeah. Of course you'll do it again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, you know. it's like every uh, every SEMA show. I always talk to somebody like, man, I don't know about this next year. And then next year comes, yeah. and you see them like two weeks before, just burning yeah. the oil. Say, nope, not gonna do that That's again. what I was saying. Remember, we're like we're like, damn, car shows are like more prep than a damn uh, a, a track event. We're actually like you're going to drive. Yeah. Man. Like, you know, it, or, or just as much, if if not more. Everything's you know? got to be spotless. Everything, you know, because we're you know we're we're. We're all anal and they had to wipe everything Definitely. down and had to, you know, just, yeah. Yes. Big pride. Especially at SEMA, you know, SEMA just has that, that prestige to it where if you have a car there, it's, it's like a huge accomplishment and you want to make sure that everything right. looks perfect. And of course you're going to see every flaw that exists in the car that maybe the, right, the regular right. person wouldn't. Yeah. Well, so it was our first time even just going to see him. We've never, we've we've never, never even been. been there. So oh, we wow. actually had no idea how big of a deal it was. Yeah. You know? So that was our first time going ever, even just to check things out. We went with ICD car, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, no way. Yeah. yeah so, oh, I mean, yeah. we were kind of blown away. Like, oh, shit. Like, 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 you know, okay, hopefully we did enough prep. Like, you know, <laughs> like, so... <laughs> So, uh, so to, so to, to, to get to win that award just with all of that was just like, it, you know, it was very cool. Yeah. So, uh, so let's talk about the, the award. How did that even come to be? Did you guys get interviewed by somebody or how did that go? Well, you know, there's a committee that goes around. There's a committee that goes around and for all the people that are in, uh, that are in the uh, import world, mm -hmm. um, it seems like there's a lot of awards that happen at, that happen at SEMA, but the Grand, the Grand Tourism Award is one of those sought after awards that people really, really want to be, they want to be included in that. And there's a very prestigious um, panel that goes around and, and sort of, you know, they look at the cars. And so, it so like, it's like there's like a European, like, you know, there's a European, there's an yeah. American, there's, I think there's like a, maybe like an off-road uh, and then a, 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 and then a Japanese, there's a Japanese import, European import. And then uh, actually Sam Sam Du from, uh, from Super Street rest in peace rest in peace uh, Super Street he's the one who I think he he he, I think he had a little influence well yeah no he he contact he's the one who contacted us yeah he he was like he somehow got my like phone number and then I had to give it to like my dad and like uh, um, so he was the one who came up to us and presented it like like hey you know this is like my choice uh, you know uh, for the for the award yeah. And then so it goes between five cars, um, and it was so cool. They made us feel like uh, like very like VIPs because we got these cool wristbands that they took us like you know when you enter the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the nightclub where it's at. We had like this like uh, we were so underdressed. We had just like t-shirts and like <laughs> and you know, our hats on, and everybody's like kind of like you know dressed up and. Uh, uh, and 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 so yeah, it was it's very unexpected. I'll let my dad continue from there. But, yeah, yeah, it was it was such yeah. a cool, it was a cool event because uh, it, it, Jesse's right. I mean, we you, you're kind of starstruck when you're there, you know, because some of the really important people in the industry are there, and you're just like, I don't even know what's going on here, man, you know. Yeah. And then they kind of escorted Jesse and I to this VIP table, and we're like, 
dude. Yeah. I don't even know what's going on right now. You know, and then, you need drinks, you need this, you need that. And then they started calling names. Jerry DeAndrea, DeAndrea is, is the announcer. Um, you know, you've got the Gran Turismo guys up there. So they, one by one, they called us all up there. And we went up there and accepted the best JDM, best uh, best Japanese import car. And, and, and first of all, Jess, you and I are blown away by yeah, just, just getting man. that award. Yeah. You know? And then, and then we're leaving, we're actually leaving the uh, stage and uh, one of the one of the girls in the back said, "You you guys need to kind of hang out here for a second. And we're like, Cause we had no idea. Like like the cars that we were going up against was like, yeah. I mean, it, like, crazy like they, were, they were very very crazy. Like you know, like not not a two car garage build. Yeah. Um and uh, uh, but yeah, so they were like like we're like okay cool like you know we're we're still just like not even expecting anything. And uh, you know T T Pain." I, right, wasn't T Pain? T Pain. He was in the yeah, back. He was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, but but then but then I, I remember telling my dad, I'm like, dude, like I think we, I this is weird, like I think we fucking won this whole thing, and and because the, the way the way the way that it works too is they submit all of the cars to uh, Mr. Gran Turismo, the the creator, and he's the one who chooses. It. No way. He's yeah. He's the one yeah. who chooses it, and and uh, and talking with Sam Dew afterwards, basically. Like you know, uh, 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 his his choice was like actually very fast. Yeah, he was just like mm, that one, absolutely. You know, yeah. wow. So and they, they loved the story of the car basically. So yeah. how how it how it started off as like a, a daily driver with AC, first track event. You know, then you're like, mm, I need better suspension. You know, like you basically upgraded the car like you would in a video game. Yeah, you know. Until it gets to the, you know, until it gets to this beast or whatever. So that's what they love about it, too. The story behind it. Dude, that is so exciting, man. Just to go there with no expectations. And I could just imagine nope. being the no idea. Yeah. the first time going to SEMA. That's huge enough as it is. But just to win yeah. that prestigious award, man. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So with the winning of that award you get to get your car scanned to be in the game yep. okay got you so when you guys uh when you guys were um when they want when you won to be in the game uh how long did they tell you the process was going to be and what was it like to to like scan the car did you have to take it somewhere or how did that work no nope. yeah well it was about a. they told us initially it would probably be about six months right you know, ended up being about twice, twice that. Gotcha. Yeah, right. rightfully so. Which you can fine. imagine. Yeah, how busy I mean, we were mad. Guys. We weren't like you know. Yeah. Were you guys in contact? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were fully upfront about it. Like oh, yeah. you know, and just. I mean, it would go a while, and then like, like you know, every now and then you'd be like, "Hey, it, um, <laughs> is this still? Do we, yeah. Is this more still valid? Can we still be in the? Excuse me. Yeah. You know, I, if I could turn, if I could turn the camera right here, I have a full sim rig. Oh, yeah. sick! Uh, you know, where I, I'm very into simulator racing. You know, Gran Turismo is like, you know, my dad bought me a PlayStation and and Gran Turismo. I remember as a kid when we lived in Japan, and like I played the shit out of that game. And, wow! And, uh, yeah. Full circle, well, man. We never build a car that would be in that game. You know, that's that's yeah. kind of an epic situation right there. I love it, man. That's that's definitely a full circle story. So, um, let's actually paint that picture a little bit. Tell us what it was like. Uh, how'd you even end up in in Japan? I'm I'm super curious on that. Okay, the um, I'm an Air Force guy. I was an Air Force guy. Okay. Twenty twenty year a twenty year uh, Air Force guy. So we were stationed here in Phoenix at uh, Luke Air Force Base uh, back in '93. Okay. And uh, and um, right around that time, we got orders for Japan, and we had been stationed at Luke Air Force Base. So you know, Jesse was had gone through grade school. He'd gone through, you know, he was he was a, a young dude. You know, I was, I was in third grade. Third, third grade. grade. Was, okay. Junior. She, uh, she was like a yeah she no she she went to Okinawa I think yeah as a junior in high school as a as a junior or a high sophomore school. or something like that yeah so we got orders for Okinawa at that time and I knew that my time I, I was down to my last six years in the military right so I'm like oh damn I gotta go 
I've got a PCS with only six years left. I mean, we kind of. I think the whole family didn't want to go. We didn't. We didn't really want to go at, at first. Yeah. yeah. So Rachel, especially in high school. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. So, <laughs> yeah. Uprooting all her friends and everything, but but uh, what? So when when the time came, we all PCS to Okinawa. We got there, you know, and it was kind of subdued. It took it took them a little a little bit of time because it's quite. A cultural change. No, no I, I loved it right away. Well, yeah, I, it was Rachel mainly. Yeah, yeah. My I, I, my I'm dog. in like fourth grade by the time I get there, so I'm fine. Like, so I'm yeah. Good anyway. Anyway. yeah. People used to make fun of me because I had long hair and they called me a girl. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, it, yeah, it was rad. Ross Petty was one of the first. That's how I met Ross Petty because we were the two people who had long hair. So we we're like, you have long hair, you have a new skateboard. Cool, let's be friends. You know? Yeah. That's how I met him, and and then so I was fine. It was Rachel, you know. But yeah. So they're all they're all skaters, right. you know. And then I have I actually have, they're in school, but I have a job. I'm a I was an F-15 crew chief at the time, so my job in the in the military it was right at the, it was right at the point where I was making the transition into being like more of like a manager type position, up upper rank. Gotcha. You know, so. I ended up being a crew chief like for one minute, and then I and then I got uh, posted in a position where I was a resource guy for a squadron of F-15s. The, the 67th, 67th, 67th fighting cops. Fight, the fighting cops. Yeah. Not what? Not that type. It was no. like a like Bruce a cock, <laughs> like a yeah. That was so, the name. The fighting, fighting cops. cops. I love yeah. it. And we have garage RCR kind of logos around the fighting cops. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is which is so which is so rad. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you. I mean, uh, you you've done trips to Japan. Yeah. So you know how quickly you can fall in love with that country. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> there, there there's just something there's just something about the how genuine how genuine the community is, uh, regardless of what history what happened in history, you know, they our kids our family had no had no problem settling into this community and really really falling in love with it because i initially went there as a three-year as a three-year tour okay so after three years went by like that which you know i go well i got to go back to the states and spend three years back in the states not that i don't love america but i love America. Yeah. but you know it was time for me to go back and spend a three-year tour and we're like no 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 the kids were in a, you know, Jesse was in a they're, position They were where, so cool. They even asked us, like, hey, do you want to extend? Guys we're like, yeah, we don't want to leave. Yeah. Wow. So we extended. Yeah. We extended for three more years. Wow. You, uh, that's how we ended up staying there for six years. And, you know, it's just like it, even six years, like looking back on it, went by so fast. And that's an island. Yeah. yeah. Okinawa is not, it's not attached to mainland Japan. It's yeah. it's a four hour so, flight. South. So you get yeah, okay. like three and a, like yeah, three and a four hour flight. flight. Really? It's like three hundred miles south of Japan. So yeah. so like Okinawa is like it's 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 definitely Japan, but you get like a lot of like island vibes. Like you know, it's almost like I call it I call it the Hawaii of like for us like you know the Hawaii. It's like the Hawaii of Japan. God. Gotcha. Because uh, you know it's it's a you know beach life. Yeah. Island mm-hmm. life. Huge vacation but mixed spot. with Japanese, you know, Japanese culture, huge, huge car, car community, like cars are huge, like, you know, so yeah, it was cool. An important part of buying Honda parts online is making sure that you can trust the company that you're dealing with to get you the right parts reliably. You're spending a lot of money and you spent a lot of time researching your build. The last thing that you may want to do is send cash to a website where you may never see it again and worse yet, never see parts. With Heel Toe Automotive, an 18 year history track record is part of the deal. Heeltoe brings you deep industry connects, professional parts recommendations, alternative ideas when your parts aren't available, and will even contact you if something on your order looks out of ordinary before it ships. Heeltoe's unique checkout allows you to select a deadline to receive your parts to make sure you get them in the time for your project plans. You can buy parts online anywhere, but Heeltoe knows what truly matters to an enthusiast. Professionalism, swiftness and accuracy heel toe is in your corner visit heeltoeauto.com or you can call or text 
at 949-295-1668. And make sure you check them out on Instagram at Heel Toe Automotive. Wow, I, I wasn't even aware of that. How far is it from, uh, you said it's four hour flight from mainland China? It's, or China, yeah, excuse me, uh, Japan? Japan? Yeah, but well, it, actually, so uh, it's three, 300 Osaka. miles. If you were to go to the, yeah, to the, to the, to the southern, basically tip of, of Japan, it, it'd be like, like 300 miles still south. It's in the Ryukyu Islands. So that whole, I, in like, so if you look at a map, it, it's not that far, yeah. but just, but the like airport is like, you know, not on the, on all the way south. So that's why it's so long. Got you. Okay. Um, yeah. did, did you guys spend a lot of time in, uh, in Tokyo? Not no. at all. Really? I, which we regret. We do, you know. we do kind of regret not, not flying more to mainland Japan. We, we only went into Osaka a couple of mm. times and typically uh the layovers we'd have there would be so short they were that, so tired from flying yeah, from you know because we'd have to fly back to the states we'd be like on vacation or something so we'd fly from okinawa to to you know to osaka and then from osaka all the way to, gotcha. all the way to la or, or somewhere else we, we would somewhere make else. like you know it'd be like a whole like 24 hour plus ordeal yeah get back yeah now um i understand what you guys are saying about going to Japan and seeing the culture that they have and just absolutely falling in love with it. You know, I've always thought what it would be to live over there in Japan and to see what kind of negative downfalls that the, the, uh, the culture would have. Um, did you guys notice anything like that? No, we actually, we never, we never experienced anything like that. And no. I know, I know the news kind of blows things up from time to time, and there has been situations where, where there has been, you know, a, a presence of uh, of American soldiers, and maybe they didn't act as as they didn't represent the U.S. like they should have, and they got in a little bit of trouble for it. But we, as a family, never were experienced to that. We were never experienced to anything like even from any locals any negative like you know. japanese they're they're cool they're like they can they can i mean i hate to say this just like just like just like anybody they could point out like hey man are you a honky you yeah. are you fucking are you like you know are, are you like uh just a piece of trash like you know or are you just like a cool like you know and and and, and uh and so they, they can tell like you know they, they like who's the who's the the normies and yeah the, I mean, I, and I hate, I, I, I don't want to talk bad about like any, you know, but there are, there's some, there's some kind of like trashy military Marines that can be like, not, not uh, sensitive to culture God or culture, like, you know, not willing to, you know, conform, not, not conform, but just, just, you know, be, be, we don't uh, want, we don't be respectful, Marines, so. you know, no, not the Marines. I don't want to call it anybody. I'm just saying there's people in general. No, definitely. I understand what you mean. People in just, general. They just right. don't uh, uh, respect, like you know, because you're you're in their country. You're a guest. You're, you're, you're a guest. You know, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Got to act. If you act cool, they'll be cool to you. Yeah, you know, I what? I always love that part about it. You know, just going to Japan and just everybody being so friendly and just yeah. because you're friendly. Yeah, you know? that that could be it too. You accordingly too, because they understand that you appreciate appreciate the fact that you're there too. So they want to welcome you into their country, and that's that's their culture. Yeah, you know. That's that's how friendly they are. Yeah, you know, I loved it, man. I even said that one day I would I would love to to like live out there for a year. Would that be rad? Or what? Oh my goodness! Yeah, definitely. Just think of all the stuff you could collect doing that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to collect anymore, man. I, I collect too much. Do you, do you have a lot of? Is your customer base? Do you, do you send a lot of your hardware? Uh. We do, but it, it would be more towards uh, internationally. It would probably be more towards uh, like the UK and Canada for sure. Uh, you know, as you guys know, the the car scene in Japan. Well, I mean, to this day, right now, is not like it is here in the states. If it is, you're probably it's talking like uh, Yasu from like XC Japan. They probably build cars the way that sure. we do here in the states but other than that um i don't really see them having much need or want yet for our style of products right but uh it's, it's funny though how the how the you know back in the day though 
that you know we would sort of imitate imitate the way that they, the style from the Japanese car, the Japanese cars, and now it's sort of doing, yeah. doing a full circle yeah. where they're That's looking at US, what's going US on in the, the U.S. scene. Yeah, and the U.K. I mean, I was born in the U.K. Oh, really? Yeah. Where at? I was born in Swindon, where the Type R, where the actual the Type R is made. Wow, very cool. So my, my father, my father was a military guy too. So I'm I'm a second generation military, and my father met my mother in the UK, and I was I was born I was born there in Swindon. So uh, we just had a we just had a, a talk with the uh, Mims Honda Day. Yeah, got there we want to somehow we'd like to make our way over there because i still have a lot of relatives that live in the uk now too how far from london uh probably about maybe a two hour drive from london got you got yeah. you yeah i actually went out there uh with dav for a uh, mims honda day 2017 yeah i believe 17. It, it was cool man it was it was a good time you know i was expecting it to be a lot different than here in the states, but it really gave me a, a like a New York City type of vibe. Exactly, same passion, right? Yeah, same passion, same. Yeah, yeah. City just life. Just city life, yeah. Just busy, you know, and a lot of tourists, a lot of bars at night, and things like that. It was yep. it was really cool. I had a good time, and uh, Dav, awesome, awesome guy for sure. Yes, very he cool. Is. Yes, we had a little chat with him not too long ago as well. Yeah, I, I see him on the Mims talk, man. He's he's hustling on that. <laughs> I know, right? You know what's real? That has to be something to that has to be something to organize. Uh, yeah, big fact, big Mike. He always he, he's he's like there. He always Mike. yeah. He's the announcer, the official announcer for all of their events, right? Yeah, Which, that's so. Cool. Yeah, 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 and then they'll usually have like a guest go. So it was me once, and then Rywire. And then uh, Brian Gillespie was gonna go, but that's when COVID hit. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, if you guys can make it out there, did, I would recommend did they it. Allow, did, did you guys bring your cars? No, 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 no. You ship? Oh, no, okay, okay. we just flew out there. You know, just traveling with all the stuff for the booth and everything. It, it, it it's so hard sometimes, man. And. Did you have a big Downstars booth though, all set up and everything? You made it. Uh, we we had a little setup there, but we didn't actually we weren't able to take our tent or anything like that because just traveling it, it makes it so hard plus when it come international then you can't bring as much stuff that you would if we were going to a, a show like in jersey or something like that yeah sure. i think that's the last time i saw you right was back east when we went to ibach that's right it turned it turned uh, four yes or yes four, four uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. turn 14 yeah that's right the last time i saw you oh man dude it seems That's it seems like a, a year is like five just exactly so much exactly. stuff COVID, man. yeah we COVID. no i know COVID. it's uh we got to get done with this lockdown man so we can all hang out again you know and do some cool car stuff again yeah definitely man so it seems like you guys uh have been doing pretty good during COVID. i see you you guys got a shop now and uh and, and you're retired now how's that I'm I'm retired now. Yeah, for the third time. Congrats, man! Yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome having him retired. Put that ass to work. You know? <laughs> Dad cleaned the shop. <laughs> I love it. So Jesse, you're the boss of the shop. Yeah, I'm the boss. He's yeah, Jesse. Boy. Jesse's the boss for sure. Yeah, crack the whip on him sometimes. <laughs> hey, you know, there's a there there's there's some kind of gratification in just being the employee, man, because you get to clock yeah, out. It, it, you got to pay the bills it, now. It, I'm responsible for the beer fridge. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. With with the boss comes a lot of responsibilities, man. No, yeah, no, he exactly. is the boss. Yeah, I love it, man. Hey, so I want to talk. Really, the mom, mom is the boss. Oh, okay. She's the boss of everybody. <laughs> hey, clean it up, Dad. I love it, man. You know, I love just seeing you guys together. How you how you get along and just you know how you share the same passion. When did you guys realize that that you made the transition from father and son into like best friends. The friends? Oh, uh, shit, I think man. when he was early, born. Man. <laughs> early on. Early on. I mean, shit, like, I can't even, like, um, I mean, really, really, it was probably in Japan whenever, whenever, because, uh, you know, my dad, he's always been a car guy. And, um, and uh, uh, I just happened to fall in with like a group of friends who, like, who, like, 
was into cars in Japan, and then and then and then kind of like kind of like I introduced my dad when we were there to like you know uh, drifting. to drifting and to like yeah. you know uh, even like even like I had one of my friends like. I didn't have a license at the time. I, I brought home one of my friends, Star, that at uh, EP nine, uh, ninety, ninety, yeah, uh, seventy one at EP seventy one Starlet. It was like a one point three liter, ripped so fast. Brought it home and and uh you know, and and gave my dad a ride in it. And he's like he's like my dad's like holy fucking shit. like really <laughs> I can't you know? believe this car is so fast. Like yeah, and, like, and Jesse's just, yeah. like well that's boost that yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what Boost does for you. Yeah. So I was sold right away. And all my friends, including I, all my friends, they all had had a, a Hachiro uh, A86s, and and uh, uh, my friend Neftali, he's over here somewhere. He was the first one on the island to have a supercharged, like out of an MR2. It was it was it was kind of ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. Yeah. Uh, hey, shut up. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Little little sidetrack. He has a KP Starlet now that he's doing a K24, and you should follow him on a uh, on Instagram. What's his Instagram? Yeah. Oh, what is, what's your Instagram? Oki Oki Bum 60 69. No. What is it? Oki Bum KP 61. Oki Bum KP 61. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to and check he's that doing out. K24. Yeah, Tali. He lives in with Nashville. Turbo and, yeah. We'll forgive him for that. Nash. <laughs> hey, what's up, brother? <laughs> heard a lot of good things about you. Hey, thank so, you, man. I appreciate him and I it. We played hockey together, and and he was our coach. And uh, so yeah, we all know each other very yeah, long time. Yeah, I've had a lot of involvement in these young dudes for many many years. You know, it hasn't been just like the dad figure. You know, I had to I had to sometimes discipline them. Yeah. Because they get a little out of control, but. They're for the most part, they're some of the best kids I've ever known. I love it, man. So you guys all hung out together in Japan? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah, my dad's always been like he, he like e- even to this day, like like uh, it's not like it's not like like uh, like like we have like just friends now that, that that are just friends. Like you think like like oh, are those your friends or are they his friends? Like you know, they're just like just like, the ours, like you know, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. Man, yeah. I love it. Phil, what keeps you having such a young soul? I think, I think, um, I don't, that, that's it. I could quote my dad. Keeping up with, with modern technology is what keeps him young, he said. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's one thing. And then kind of hanging out with uh, people that have fresh ideas too, which are typically, and I'm, and I hate, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to badmouth any of you old guys like me out there, but there's something to be said about like keeping yourself young, thinking young, uh, working on projects, working on you know, uh, kind of discovering new things. I think that that's one of the things that will keep you young. So he, you know, he, we're, he I'm learning like shit of, all the time. A lot of he follows like a lot of vlogs, a lot of. Uh, uh, rant like a lot of just like cool people on social media platforms doing cool things, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, on both sides of the world too, because I'm not just a I'm not just a JDM Honda guy. That's that's my love too. But I also love like vintage, we've got a vintage Porsche in the shop that we're doing a, a 914 6 GT that we just installed a 2.8 like stroker motor in it, you know. So. We, we also do that kind of stuff too we, you know Jesse builds uh, he builds a lot of uh, a lot of uh, pit bikes you know and things like that so we just kind of we have a of lot course of interest. he has like a full ripper Japanese like stroker motor pit bike <laughs> <laughs> you know, of co- yeah, yeah. Hey, you got to go fast in the pits right? oh definitely yeah, yeah. you got <laughs> yeah. you got to go fast everywhere everywhere that's right Frank. Yeah. wow yeah. you know um you did touch on something man and it's I think that that's one of the hardest things about getting older is you feel like you you have to have a certain type of mentality and you become an old guy and then now you don't do anything that the younger kids do because that's it's immature and you know and then even you fall into the trap of I just like muscle cars who cares about those rice burners or whatever but I don't know I don't know what what it is with people where they just think that they have to follow a certain way just because they've gotten older grow up you see 
You see a lot of friends that do that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You see a lot of friends that you were cool with, like in high school and, you know, college and things like that. And all of a sudden you're like, what happened to you, dude? You used to be cool, man. Now you're just like some old man or something, yeah. you know? You know, the way that I think about it is being an adult is taking care of responsibilities. And as long as your responsibilities are taken care of, what else matters? Anything, you could do whatever you want. If you want to play video yeah, games, fun. have fun, skateboard, whatever. What, if, as long as you're able to do it, why would you not want to do it? I agree. I agree. Yeah, and two, I'll, I'll, I'll run into people that are my age right now, and I see them. I'm like, whoa, you're definitely like 10 years older than I am because the mentality that you have versus the mentality I have, I'm more towards my 13-year-old son than closer to you. Yeah, but you're doing good things with your son too, though, dude. I mean, this the whole skate, the whole skate Thank thing you, is man. probably inspired by him. Yeah, definitely. I got a lot of things that this guy inspired me to do too. It's not, it's not a one-way street with a with a family. Yeah, you know, you've got to open your mind up, take, you know, understand what understand what they what 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 makes them happy, and then share in that sort of journey, you know, so that you can have fun all through all through life it doesn't end when your kid turns 18 years old yeah you know it, it doesn't end there it goes it, it it's forever you know yeah definitely it's i don't know man i don't know if it's the way that just the society was displayed to us when we were younger you know you you grow up you go to school you go to college you get a career <laughs> you retire <laughs> and then you get to whatever not have yeah. anything to do you know, but at the position that you're at now, you retire, but yeah. Yeah. without squeezing in all that other fun stuff that you did for the past however many years, I feel like there's a balance and you could do it all. Yeah. And it's, if it's not cars, it's got to be something, something, something kind of something has to kind of motivate you. You know, you've got to you've got to pick a hobby, especially when you retire, because you think that that's the end of time. But it's not. It's not at all the end of time. It's like. It's almost like, for me, it's almost like a beginning to where, shit, I don't have to go to work in the morning. I don't have to slap that alarm clock anymore. Yeah. I don't have to do a snooze button yeah. anymore. I can get up, have, you know, have coffee with my wife. She's still working, by the way, so we better keep that on the down low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. So Helen and Jesse are the... Jesse and Rachel are still working. Only Dad is the guy is the lazy. You guy, earned it. You, know? you earned it. <laughs> oh, oh, he hundred percent earned yeah. it. Hundred percent. It's a lot of years. It's a lot of years yeah. of doing he, it. He's so funny because like you know some days like rarely like you know just chill chill on the couch and you know just be catching up on all of like his YouTube like you know people that he, that we all follow and like you know. And like, and, you know, and I'll be like, hey, what's up, dad? What do you do all day? He's like, yeah, fine, man, I've just been chilling, dude. Like, you know? <laughs> and like, like he feels all guilty. Tour de France. I'm like, dad, you fucking earned that shit, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. You worked your, you worked your ass off for, for years. Yeah. Man, yeah, enjoy that shit, dude. You know? Yeah. You know what, Jesse? It's only, Frank, I've only, I just retired. Yeah. I, I seriously, like the 18th of uh, July was my last working day. Oh, shit. So it's still brand oh, new. Please. Really hasn't sunk no, in right. yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's weird. Wow. It's crazy. Jesse, well, it's uh it's special that you realize that about your dad and all the sacrifices that he's made. Oh totally, yeah. Very Absolutely. very cool thing, man. I love that yeah, hard, hard ass worker, man. Like is <laughs> you earn it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. worth it though. Worth it. Hell yeah. So Definitely. before you introduce your dad into uh boost what was uh what what were you into before that phil as far as car wise as far as car wise okay yeah. so like Start back in the band must probably back in the 70s yeah back in the 70s i was in believe it or not i was into v-dubs oh, okay gotcha. so when, when before uh before yeah before the Mustang. Okay. so um I was into I was in V dubs when everybody was doing uh, like hot rods and V eights and stuff like that. I was doing like little four bangers. I think I had like some early '60s Beatles. You know, I had a a '70. I mean a '65 a V dub van. I had a bunch of cars like that. And then and then uh, Jesse's right. I'm gonna go back a little bit. I started with a '65 Mustang. Though, yeah. With a 289 Cobra motor. Got you. 
and uh, and then I joined the military. That's he's he's absolutely right. So he's my but this he's my, my, he's, but, my but uh, he's downplaying he's guy. downplaying this Mustang. <laughs> this Mustang was like a, a complete ripper. It was all cool, built bro. built tranny built rear end. You know, high compression. Yeah. So and 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 a story that I love to tell is that that uh, what my dad was drunk. My dad was pretty drunk one time. <laughs> And and my mom had to drive it. Yeah. My mom's actually a really good driver, like you know. Yeah. But she said just the way that the cam, and you know, and like back in the day, to, to have a a, a a stiff, you know, like it didn't like these days you can have ripper clutches that still kind of like you know back then if you had a good pressure plate it was like, yeah 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 to push that shit in <laughs> you know old technology and my mom like. Could, barely get the car going just because it was like Row! like you know yeah. Like, yeah it was lively i love that story yeah it was lively but he's right yep. though he's right there and that kind of reeled me into thinking that was my high school days and i, I and i graduated high school like in 72 72 okay that's how, that's how long that's how long ago and then um yeah i went through the hot rod scene went to went to b-dubs for a while mm -hmm. it was weird because i i liked the four banger air cooled stuff and then it was weird because when I was in the military, the guy that I sold that Mustang to wanted to sell it back to me again, and I ended up buying that car back again for a while. No way. Yeah, yeah, dude. So I went, I went through some crazy times where I had like, you know, a lot of crazy cars. Um, it was all blown out, right? I guess at that time, right? It never ran right. Yeah, nothing. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It out. Downtime with Downstar would like to welcome our newest sponsor, Rywire Motorsport Electronics. Rywire has been around since 2005, supplying you with solutions for all of your motorsport electronics needs. Whether you need a simple ECU adapter, engine harness, chassis harness, or PDM setup, they can get you taken care of. Offering products for most popular engine platforms from Honda, Toyota, Nissan, GM, hey, even Lamborghini. And if you have any private label needs, they can also take care of that as well. Rywire is the leader in motorsport electronics in our community, and we're excited to have them part of the Downtime with Downstar star family please please make sure you guys support rywire you guys could check them out at rywire.com or on instagram at rywire underscore motorsport underscore electronics i know it's long guys if you just search rywire it will pop up and if you're searching make sure you search them on youtube and you can check out their youtube channel where they are working on their new ev s2000 build we're super excited for that and we're super excited for Rywire to be part of the Downtime with Downstar family. So please guys, make sure you go show Rywire some love and tell them that Downtime with Downstar sent you. Once again, that's rywire.com. Did you guys see the uh, the new Mustang that's coming out? The uh, Cobra 1400, I believe, Cobra Jet? Is that the SUV one? No, no. This is uh, it. It looks like just just a regular Mustang, but it's it's, a, it's electric, electric <laughs> and it's uh, eight point two on the quarter mile. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one. That's the one that uh, that Ken Block was driving, right? Oh, really? Block, no, his was fully electric. I thought that was uh, that was, was Mach E. The Mach E. No, this one is a different one. I just seen the video. I think it came out maybe like four days ago, but it's. It's called the Cobra Jet 1400, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, it's wow. uh, the quarter mile time was 8.2. I don't know the horsepower, but I think it's, I think it's 1400. I think that's why it's named that. But Three? yeah, Three. and the, dude, that, that's, that's going to kill some honky. Bro, <laughs> the, the engine bay of it, it, the electric motor, it looks kind of like an old school V8. I know it sounds weird, but. When you look at it, it doesn't look like the 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 cylinder it kind of like Tesla one. It it looks yeah. like it has cylinder heads or something, and then it it looks like old like the old spark plug wires, but they're the orange. I don't know, man. There was just a real quick clip of it, but it looks amazing. Amazing. Yeah, That's crazy. I love it, man. I I, I still got a, a special part in my uh, my heart for uh, muscle cars, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I I I totally agree with you too. I mean, you know, there's something about those old piston slapping, you know. I mean, even even my old uh, my I've got a 71914.6 GT clone in the in here. It's got a 77911S motor in it. Yeah. 
and it's uh, like 250 horses, but the noises that that thing, the mechanical noises that thing makes speaks to my heart. Oh, definitely, yeah. man. Just something about that noisy, that noisy uh, compression and uh, carburetors. 40 IDA downdrafts, you yeah. know, that just make the so sweetest noises ever. Yeah, you know? I still have, so, uh, I have my uh, 69 Chevelle still. I have a, you do. yeah. Uh, 69 Chevelle with a 383 stroker, um, 177 Wyan single carb blower, and uh, instead of a carburetor, we did the FI tech, so it's like the the yeah. electronic fuel injection, but it's the size of a carburetor yeah. because uh, yeah. we have the root style blower on there now, and I didn't want to replace that because just like you said, man, it, it just gives it that nostalgic look, you know. But yeah. I don't show that car enough love, so. As soon as we finish a couple projects that we have in the garage, we're going to put that one back there, and uh, RC and I are going to get down on that one. Dude, that's so awesome. RC's there RC. now, huh? Yeah, man. RC's there? Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw that bum off the side over here. He He's not there. No, he already left. Oh, he, uh, he did the RC, RC thing, and he went to go get some weed right now. So. <laughs> He's a good dude, man. RC's yeah. a good dude. But yeah, no. Got, got a lot of heart, history with that good guy. Yeah, man. Um... RC's a great guy, you know, and he's always wanted to move out of Phoenix. And yes. uh, we had an opening here, and everything just worked out perfectly. And, dude, I, I couldn't be happier. That's awesome. His shop's yeah. close to you, you say? Yeah, he had a shop right there. I think he, he had, had one shop like in, our, in, like our, in, this in our actual building. Got right? you. Yeah, yeah. yeah before, before here, he was with uh, JDL. JDL. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we just but, uh, JDL. Man, you see RC every day. He has the biggest smile. He just, no shirt on. He's just loving the weather. Yeah, That's I awesome, bet, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So cool. yeah, man. So, so he lives there full time now? Yeah. He does. Yeah, wow. so That's so bad. he's here in the, the, the city that the shop's in is called Ventura. So he's in Ventura, probably like 10 minutes away from the shop. Nice. But, uh, nice. It's awesome, man. Just having somebody, just somebody like-minded and motivated and wants to create. You know, I think that like this point in my career, that's really all I want to do. You know, I just want to create things. Yeah. yeah. And you put yourself in a position where you can do that now, so that makes it extra special. Definitely, you know? man. You know, I'm. I always see things, and if, if I see that there's something that I want to do, I just have to figure out a way. You know, I have to figure out a way to make it happen and do whatever I have to do, whatever sacrifices, even like I say with this podcast, you know, we do this twice a week and we don't really, I mean, now we're getting paid with sponsors, but that only came on episode 150. So 150 episodes is just throwing them on the wall and hopefully something sticks. Yes. And uh, cool. yeah, but hopefully this turns into something and uh, we'll have all this history, you know. Yeah, thanks Hell for yeah. inviting us. Yeah. That's rad. It's good to, you know, if that's the only way we can communicate with you right now, that's that's cool. You no, know? definitely. And you know, there's so many, uh, so many times. There's people like yourself that were part of the community, but we never really have a chance to sit down. And if we do, it's through passing at a IBOC yeah. meet or you know a dinner exactly. or SEMA or something. But when we're on those trips, we already have one thing in mind. This trip is about. SEMA so we're all talking about SEMA or whatever but you know I like to dive in to get to know people and get to know why they are how they are and their history yeah. and where they're from and you know especially just the dynamic that you guys have together just a father and son working together and you know enjoying the same passion man I know so many people listening and they're just I wish that my dad was into what I'm into or I hope that my son is into cars in the future and like you guys have that man and that's a beautiful thing i'm yeah, pretty lucky with that you, sure. you have to I mean, and i know you have to kind of cultivate those relationships like early on you know it's not something that happens like you know it's not something that happens like late in life you can't say well i i haven't been your father for 20 years now all of a sudden i want to have something you know let's do something together yeah it's not way at all with Jesse and I. Jesse and I have, have agreed on a lot of things. I mean, he probably disagrees on a few things that I do, but doubt we it. bounce it off of each other. I doubt it's it. not it's not one of those kind of things where I go, well, hey, what do you think if I do this and this, this? And right. Yeah. But 
try this too. Yeah. You know? Right. So yeah. it's that sort of a relationship we have together to where, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm the dad. Yeah. You will do what you say, yeah. and that's the bottom line. Well, yeah. that's not. That, that's he's always. He's always been like that too. That's what I was gonna say. You know, that's uh, you're 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 breaking the dynamic of you know I'm the father, you're the son, you listen to me, which you know, it's natural. But if you're trying to build that friendship together, no one wants to have a friend who's who's the boss or who's always yeah. right. You know, it's awesome yeah. to have somebody that you look up to that's been like your hero, look down on you and say, hey, what do you think? What do you think would be the best decision? You know, that gives that gives the child power and you know that that feels good because it makes you feel like you're on an even playing field and um uh, yep. I think that's where a lot of people miss out on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He, he's always been super cool about like supporting like, you know, everything everything I've ever done like as far as like, you know, like I was really into racing bicycles and you know, even like skateboarding like in Japan it was so hard because uh, uh, you know, we'd have the California cheapskates, you know, CCS catalog. And and my dad was so cool. I was always that kid that had like fresh skateboards because they would always get like, wa- we're on an island, so they'd get like waterlogged, yeah. like, you know, it was hot, like, like uh, uh, he always just kept me fresh, like all the time, like just gave me all of the, the, uh, the supplies to, 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 you know, you know, yeah. just have fun and, 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 uh, try to be good at whatever you do you know i love it man yeah, phil, phil where do you feel that that came from was that an example that you were shown from your father when growing up i wish i wish i could say that it was i mean like you know and i'm not going to bad mouth my dad at all but he was the military he was he was one of those military guys it was a military guy you know so sometimes you learn from a good example sometimes you learn from something that's less that's less perfect so my wife and i uh, early on we were kind of exposed to similar situations you know where where you have to make a conscious decision to say uh this is what i like about the relationship i had with my father this is what i dislike about it so i'm going to choose the best things that i know i'm i'm not i'm not going to ever say that I'm, i was a perfect dad because I had my faults also, you know, I was, you know, I was a little, I was a little harsh, like when I was a little younger, you know, had a little more attitude, but, was good. but, um, you kind no, of learned from those, was, those was mistakes. Good <laughs> no, it wasn't too crazy. You kind of learned from those mistakes. He made mom, all. he made mom, you know, whip my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you, I make you, her do the You punish work. him. I don't want to, man. Yeah. I'm not a discipline, disciplinary. Yeah. yeah. I, but uh, you, you understand what I mean? That, you, completely, you, you, completely. You, and you and learn from your role model. Yeah. So say that's what I like about that role model. That's what I dislike about it. And then if you're man enough to choose the good things, and and that's the way you you do your family, you you treat your family, it's only going to be a good thing. It's only going to wow. be. Wow. I I love that you say that, man. You know, um, you hear it so many times about how people are and you know well that's how i was raised that's how i was raised and yeah Yeah. that could be it but you don't have to take every single trait that you learn from your parents or your guard guardians or whatever you know you just think about those times when you were a certain age and your dad scolded you and you're like man you're telling me don't do this but why you're not telling me why you're just telling me don't do this because i said how am i supposed to learn from this you know so i've even taken the same approach with my son you know i i hate to to yell at him and i'll tell him you know what dude i don't like to yell at you but you have to understand when you do this it makes us feel like this you know what that feeling is of you know somebody not paying attention to you someone not listening to you someone disrespecting you you're 13 already you understand what disrespect feels like now yeah. you're doing this to your mother think about yeah, yeah. it like that and you know when yeah. you have that talk 20 minutes later he comes back you know I'm, I'm sorry which that's all i'm looking for the understanding but the same well, way yeah. that i can make him understand it could be a physical way but is he gonna learn the lesson or is he just not gonna get caught the next time absolutely right and you and you're in a position where we don't we don't grow up we don't grow up with 
the the uh, the knowledge of being a parent. We have to kind of learn along the way. We have examples, but that that's my point. You kind of have to take the best of those examples, and then hopefully you make the right decision to go down that path. Because the last thing you want to do is like have a family yeah, right. that you know that that because that's why so many families you know split apart. Yeah. Um, We've been, uh, I've been married for 45 years, you wow. know, so, so, you know, it's awesome. I mean, my, my wife is this amazing person. It's, she's so smart. She's like, she's like a, she's like the, the bond in the family that, that you look, that a family looks for. And she's probably the kind, most kind person I've ever known. Yeah. And, and I think that, that situations like that are very rare. So I just hope that I just hope that all the people that are viewing this out there, that they find someone like that, that they can share, they can share things like that. And they understand that, like if Phil wants to go to the garage at, at uh, five o'clock at night and he doesn't come home till 11 o'clock, it's not because he doesn't want to be. I don't want to be with Helen. It's just that I got I got projects that I want to do. And she's totally understanding of that. Yeah. She's like, oh, man, go, go do your thing, man. I got plenty of time to spend with you, you know. Now it's it's rat. Now, if you look back forty five years, was that something that you saw in her, or was this a a, a relationship that you guys had to build and realize what to, what ticked her off and ticked you off and and go from there? Yeah. Well, it wasn't without trials and tribulations by any means. It's it's the kind of thing that uh, you make some conscious decisions along the way to stay in a marriage stay in a relationship or they or do the easy thing and give it up you know so my choice i had two children with helen my choice was to stay and and you know keep this family together because my, my parents stayed together too my parents were you know they 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 married and they stayed together until they both passed away you know and and uh and it, it was it was a good relationship that they had too. So I had a good example as well. You know, what I mean, yeah. But it's like you know, man, it's it's work. It's work, and you gotta you gotta work at it. Just like you gotta work at building cool shit. You gotta, you know, yeah. nothing's easy, man. If it is, then everyone would fail. Then it's, <laughs> it's probably not gonna be worth it if it was easy. One of the most critical parts to any build is the clutch. Without a proper clutch, you won't be able to get that power to the wheels. No one wants to spend hundreds of dollars on a clutch that won't hold their power for more than a few races or spirited drives. It is important to go with a clutch that you know that you can count on. That's why many people choose Action Clutch over the competition. Action Clutch offers OEM replacements all the way to 1200 plus horsepower that can be found everywhere from street cars, drag cars, and even formula drift vehicles. Action Action Clutch makes all their kits here in the USA with material sourced locally in Los Angeles. Not only is Action Clutch made in the USA, they have also made a strong focus this year to give back a percentage of sales back to the community during these hard times, providing impacted families with groceries and other necessities. Contact Action Clutch today with whatever you need and you will receive the family treatment. You can find their product line at actionclutch.com. If you don't see what you need, please fill Feel free to call them at 323-269-6051. You can also DM them on Instagram at Action Clutch or email them at sales at actionclutch.com. If you need help choosing a kit, Action Clutch can get you set up with the right kit for your build. No, hell no, hell no, man. You gotta you gotta put time in it. You really do. Yeah. You know, you know what I, lo I love that, man. Just seeing that, um, you know, two different people who just have that that love for each other and they just don't give up and then you yeah, get exactly. to this point where you're at you know and i, I feel like yeah. people will throw in the towel before it even gets to that point where where you where you start to understand each other and you grow together yeah. you know instead of just bickering back and forth yeah that that's gonna happen but you have to get to like a happy medium sure do you sure do and it's a challenge i mean you know you got to you got to work at that kind of a relationship, you know, it's not, it's not easy. Yeah. And I feel like that's with any relationship as well. I've, I've taken that same approach to, uh, shoot, even to employees, you know, uh, talking You're to, right. uh, talking to RC the other day, 
I'm saying, look, my job as a boss is to figure out how you work, how you like being talked to, and how you don't like being talked to. I have yeah. to figure that out, and I have to be fluid between each employee because I can't just put a blanket statement down because then no, yeah. nobody's going to like me. You know, I'm going to be the guy who's going to be the asshole. But if I tell him, like, this is why we need to do this, this is why we do that, and you tell me, how do you feel? Do you think that that's right? Well, I don't think it's right because of this. That's great. I never even thought about that. You know, I'm just yeah. one person. I can only think about it one way. But when you start asking people for their different perspectives, what's good, what's not, what do you like, you get further rather than letting your ego take control and say, you know what, this is my business. We're going to do it how I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and if you don't communicate that, that's when the issues start to arise, right? So, you know, if you don't share, what what's the end goal with, with what we're doing here? What do we want to accomplish here? And if you don't share that with the person that you share a space with or share a vision with, then it's naturally you're kind of open yourself up for you're going to open yourself up for failure. Yeah. You know, and some hard times, really. Hundred percent, man. But hopefully, uh, some lessons that you'll learn, so then you'll uh, progress forward after that. <laughs> so let's talk about the shop, man. What's uh, what is the meaning of RCR Garage RCR? Where'd the name come from? Robles Circuit Racing, actually, uh, nice. that was my my dad came up with that, yeah. Yeah. And he, he's so cool. He's like, like you know, because like uh, it, it was uh, you know, early on he's like he's like, but you drift. I'm like, nah, man, I love I love it, you know. So, um, uh, and then with my you know like our logo is, is uh, kind of based on Top Gun. Yeah. It's like you know my dad being in the Air Force and you know he had he had his name plastered on some fighter jets and stuff because he was like a very Rupert, cool Rupert, you know <laughs> um and uh uh yeah so that, that's kind of how it all came about and then and then really for the shop it was just because we outgrew totally outgrew our uh, our our two-car garage yeah. so finally we just made the made the um you know that was sort of the inspiration, like Jesse shot. touched on it, like uh, Garage RCR is like uh, very much like uh, comes from sort of an aviation background. I've been in aviation since I was 19 years old. I, you know, I joined the military at 19. I was an F F4 crew chief, uh, went from being an F4 crew chief for four years, got out of the military, went to work for Bell Helicopter. I was building uh, jet rangers. Uh, then I went from there to work for Learjet, and I worked for Learjet for a couple of years, and then we had a, a downturn in the economy in the early 80s, so it kind of forced me back into the military again because I knew that I had that experience that they needed, so I went back into the military and finished out 16 more years uh, as an aviation guy again uh, in as an F-15 crew chief. So. Uh, then when I got out, I went to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and got my degree in professional aeronautics and also went to work for Boeing. So I worked for Boeing for 10 years and then I went to work for the customer. It's called Defense Contract Management Agency, which is actually the, I, I represented the Army and we actually bought the uh, Apache AH-64Es from, from Boeing. So wow. that was my job that I just retired from. Did you get to fly any of these? Uh, a couple times, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, but, I, but you know, as a crew chief, you're you're responsible for making sure that, that thing flies. So the pilots do all the flying. I just make sure it works. Got you. <laughs> that's where you get a, a, a lot of his good mechanic skills, obviously. And that's where the yeah. mechanical skills he, come from. He too. teaches me certain ways how to do cotter pins. You know, Got how you. To, uh, you know, like safety wires techniques like certain little things that are you know yeah yeah things that are yeah. aviation all, all of our you know people can probably everything come has a torque spec you know? yeah. yeah i love it so we're just you know, about that kind of thing we sort of take an aviation approach to auto mechanics all the time you know and that that's kind of the way we work well that's a definitely a good way to learn um you know my my torque specs is just until i can't <laughs> You have good. a calibrated elbow there. Yeah, <laughs> that's good yeah. right there. <laughs> there you go, perfect. <laughs> so, how long ago did you guys get the shop? 
right before COVID, like two months, like so it was March or what's a couple months, you know, like January, late January or something like that, or February even. Yeah. 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 Very. Yep. And and um. So yeah. not long, really. We haven't been here that long. Just yeah, no, not that long at all, man. Long yeah. enough to kind of fill it up with cool stuff and yeah. work on rad projects all the time. You know, we've got we've got S14, we've got a 914, an S14, we've got an EG Civic, tandem EG Civic in here. We've got an S13 with a 1JZ up here. We've got a whole bunch of pit bikes in here. And, oh man. And more projects on the way, man. We're we're just gonna keep filling it up till we run out of room. You still have room? No. No. <laughs> Max. <laughs> but uh, Jesse and I recently Recently, Jesse and I picked up another uh, EH, uh -huh. EG. EG yeah. <clears throat> so, so um, we picked up uh, we picked up a shell, and we're going to build another track car. So Very cool. we don't the 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 Pandem EG the the Gran Turismo car is kind of going to make a couple of appearances from time to time, but uh, we're going to co-drive probably more Jesse than Dad co-driving. No, Jesse, it'll be both. Jesse will be. Uh, I want to do the VTEC club, the whole V, I want to do the, the v, whole Yeah, we're going to do that, exactly. We've got a, yeah. we just picked up a K24A, a JDM K24 motor for it. Uh, then we have to go over to ICB Motorsports, which is literally eight miles from here. Yeah. And probably start sourcing a whole bunch of parts so we can kind of get that car together and uh, and do the next year, do the season with the VTEC club. Hell yeah, man. Very cool. You know, um, yeah. That's somebody I need to have on the podcast too. I need to reach out to him. Shout out to Matt. Um, Dude, those guys are so rad. They put on some amazing track events that are just, and they're well supported. Uh, they do an amazing job of just organizing those those track those track days. So, I mean, if I was if I had anything Honda powered, I'd be at, I'd be at those events for sure. I love it, man. Now speaking yeah. of uh, Honda powered but not Honda, my uh, my next car that I want to get is an S14. I already uh, I already built it in my head, man. S14 with the Boss kit and a K series in it. I'm excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So yeah. so w yeah. with, with that said, Jesse, talk to me about drifting, man. How'd you get bit by the bug? I mean, uh, it come it all comes back from from Okinawa. Um, uh, you know, I had some, I just had some really, really cool friends who were all into it. And, um, and, uh, uh, when I first moved to America though, like I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't actually build a drift car right away. Um, my dad actually bought me a, a Datsun 510, mm. but, and this is early, this is like 2000 and by 2001, like it's kind of before like engine swaps were big. Him and I swapped a VG30 in it with a turbo. Um, so that was a pretty cool car, ripped. Um, but yeah, so then years go by, and then I, I got into to, to Hondas and everything. And then uh, and then and then I, there was one point where I had an EG, and and then he had you know this current EG, and they're they're both at the time they're both kind of similar track cars, and like it kind of just didn't make sense to have two of them because you know. He, he can drive my car i can drive it vice versa it doesn't we're not weird about yeah. that so i ended up selling one of my eg race cars and then i bought an, an s13 the one that was on the cover of super street that's wadded up now i crashed the shit out of oh, it oh wow um but uh, uh so then i bought that one and then and then uh, uh so just kind of have the best of both worlds because i love drifting i love you know like like time attack track grip stuff i love grip i love drift so just to have the best of both worlds is how I got back into it, basically. Very cool, man. Yeah. He's got the advantage over me, Frank. He's got he's good at drifting and gripping. Where I can, only thing I can do is grip. You really? Know? If the car goes sideways and I start getting, I start sweating. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, but I mean, we just need more practice. He, but he, he has like, cause uh, I like I, I help uh, uh do little. I, I I help teach like a for our local drift events like. Uh, uh, clinics, we we yeah. do like drift clinics and stuff. Oh, and cool! I want to talk to so he, so he's he's like taking my class before and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. So so, so you know, fun. got him out there doing donuts and stuff. Dude, and tell me just, about we, that. How does that work? Your class? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, um, uh, basically for like our local track events here out at Wild Horse Pass. Like, there's a company called Go Fast Entertainment, 
and uh, uh, they, they they host like a drift clinic like like basically before the main event like happens like you know, and, which is uh, about once a month like in the in the in the cooler season. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. And the non-COVID cooler season. Non-COVID cooler and, season. Right? And uh, yeah, man, you just get you get tons of seat time, and and uh, you know we'll teach anybody like if whether it, if they've never done a donut before, or like you know if you want to learn how to do a big like you know. 75 mile an hour entry or whatever like you know we'll, we'll co- help help coach you on that and car set up and and uh uh you know yeah it's just cool it's just it's just like an open it's for kind of like for all levels it's pretty cool wow now you obviously would have to bring your own car or bring, yeah bring your own car yeah yeah, yeah. gotcha have you ever come right along right along in a drift car have you ever not drift not car? drift grip but not drift <laughs> You need to come out and ride with Jesse sometime, man. It's, yeah. uh, Dude, I would a, love that. It's definitely an eye, eye-opening experience to have that, to go sideways at nearly 100 miles an hour, you know? Wow. It's, yeah, it'll get your attention real quick. <laughs> you know, and I tell everybody that's like, you know, drift helps my grip, you know, because like if you're in a grip car and, and it does get a little loose, you're going really fast, you feel real confident, you know, and then, and then grip helps my drift, you know, like like as far as like going super fast like you know being comfortable going super fast you know so like, yeah i love them both yeah there, there's actually events where like we're we're, we're we're he'll be out there doing time attack stuff and then i'll be drifting and he'll let me like do like the uh the time attack session so i have in, in a, you know going from a a rural drive drift car to a front wheel drive honda in one day you know within the, like it's just like a mind like it blows your it's it's really it, it's fun and challenging and yeah and uh yeah, I love both of them. I love them that equally. Sounds awesome, dude. Yeah, I really, really want to build a drift car. The only experience I've had with drifting is uh, just growing up with my Chevelle and drifting on accident. <laughs> smoking, yeah, yeah, some, yeah. smoking some tires off. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, I actually have a uh, my BMW, and um, I still I still need to test it out because it's all wheel drive. But there's a certain sequence you could do to make it rear wheel drive. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to try that out because I think that that thing would tires it, it would drift pretty good. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, man. man <laughs> very cool. We're we're really fortunate enough. We're really fortunate out here in Arizona to have a lot of tracks that are relatively close to where we live. Yeah, you know, we've got the Wild Horse Pass Complex. There's three tracks out there, four actually. Uh, we've got Chuck Walla that's two hours, two three hours away. Uh, we've got Indy Motorsports ranches down the road, and then when we want to make a big, when we want to make a big trip, we go we go Sorry, out there and visit you guys. Sorry. You know, go out to Big Willow and and uh, places like that, so we can, you know, uh, I've only done it once with uh, with um, um, the B Tech Club where I go out there for the autumn event, but they've got an event coming up, I think, in October. Uh, that's going to be out at Chuck Wallace, so we're going to haul the car. We've got a couple of upgrades that we have to do to it uh, as far as braking goes because um, we're running uh, we're running basically a stock booster setup mm. uh, with some massive brakes on the car and ev- all the lines are really really close to the JDL manifold so we know we're going to have issues with with braking and boiling uh, brake fluid so we're going to reconfigure everything go to a uh, uh, go to a booster delete, uh, and, and yeah, from home development, yeah, shout, out to, shout, out to, yeah. shout out to home for sending us a whole bunch yeah. of really cool, cool, but we haven't got them yet because they're tied up in COVID and got gotcha. custom. Is that the but adapter that uses the stock master cylinder? It uses uh, yeah. well, it depends. It uses a master cylinder that they custom design for whatever sort of a brake setup you have. Gotcha. So if you've got, a big break, you know, a big break like we do on this. We've got uh, Brembo Racing GT uh, brakes on the front, which is almost like a NASCAR front setup. The car's got way more brakes than it needs, but those guys can engineer it so that they dial everything in perfectly with a proper prop valve in there and, you know, just make it to where I can left foot brake with the car because. Uh, I don't know if you know, but we've got a, a five speed sequential gearbox. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, that's that's an amazing, an amazing um, um, gearbox that's in the car, and, and you know we're kind of forced to go down that road because 
we added boost to the car, a GTX 3076 turbo, 11 pounds of boost. It went to 420 horses with 325 foot-pounds of torque. So that uh, the EP3R DC5R tranny wasn't capable of handling that kind of torque. So that kind of drove us to do the uh, the Quaif five-speed sequential gearbox. Wow, that's such a weird um, horsepower range that, that the K-Series Trans can go to. It does. You know? those, I mean, those, those motors are boost. You know, they love boost, the, man. The motors. They love that. You love boost, you know. Yeah, that's that's one of the problems that I'm working on right now is the uh, the transmission side of things. Is that there's there's that that weird area that you're at where you're like, okay, you'll be good right here, but you know, 50, 100 more horsepower, you're gonna have to get a transmission that could handle 2,000 horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> you got like third and fourth gear issues. You've got you know synchros come into play. You got you got a lot of issues like that axles everything you know to where you're kind of forced if you want to have something uh even more so than that i mean uh we run like we're running a7 hoosiers on the car so that was like crazy grip so you come off a curb and you grab grip all of a sudden and boom fourth gear would be gone this guy loves you know? mm. I, I, it would strip all the teeth off the oh, gear like got you, you know, got all, you all the time the guys know out there how you know, in, in a grip situation like that, you've got to have, a, you know, a, a strong gearbox to be able to handle that. Now, what uh, what shifter do you have on it? It's a uh, it's a Geartronics load cell. So it's actually the shifter itself is a is a uh, Quaif shifter, but in order to upgrade, uh, just um, uh, because. There's a lot of there's a lot of problems that are involved in that when you upgrade a shifter and you're using a load cell, and we're trying to run we're trying to run uh, K Pro with a car, so you have to have Geartronics so the transmission has its own ECU that provides a shift cut for you, so basically it's it's wired into K Pro. Gotcha. Unless you unless you spend a crap ton of money and go with Motec or something like that. The, the issues you're going to have with a proper shift cut are going to be, you know, it's going to be almost impossible to do it. So in order for us to do that, I had to go with a Geartronics load cell with it, with its own ECU coupled with K-Pro to make the, to make the shift cut work. And were, was it you that just figured all of this out, the, the components or? Oh, no. Oh, no, oh no! I had a lot of help with that. Yeah, it's Phil's. That, Phil's not that smart. Yeah, it, it sounds comes, technical, man. <laughs> when it comes to you know having to uh, set those kind of parameters, yeah, then you kind of have to rely on some of the experts. You have to talk to, you have to talk to Honda. You have to talk to Geartronics. You have to talk to everybody to find out what the proper sequence is for that because. The Geartronics, uh, the Geartronics ECU is capable of a shift cut and is capable of a throttle grip, uh, blip, but typically you can't throttle blip a uh, front wheel drive car. That's kind of exclusive to rear wheel drive cars. What would the, I don't care what is that? Throttle, throttle blip. A throttle blip when you pull back on the shifter on the downshift and it actually does a match shift for you to where it'll engage, it'll engage it automatically by just pulling back on the strain gauge it'll provide that shift cut that'll that'll allow you to downshift as well as upshift yeah so it's very it's very tricky it's very 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 technical you know a 92 civic shouldn't shouldn't probably have that much technology <laughs> in it but it sure does yeah, yeah. we've kind of gone that extra mile and there's been some regrets and a lot of figuring out to make to make all these systems kind of work together you know Seems like it's uh it's been worth it though, man. You see this car everywhere. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's 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 so rad. I mean, you see a lot of Hondas now that are lo- like a lot of the the time attack cars that you know world time attack cars that are front wheel drive cars now that are running sequential gearbox with not a problem. One, they're yeah they're able to they're able to add that kind of torque and have a lot of fun with those cars. So, uh, did you guys ever dabble into drag racing? No, not really. Drag racing is one of those kind of things that um, there's a there's a whole different experience level with that. 
you know, and there's a whole kind of, uh, there's a whole different, we, we, we're in the complex with uh, Low Cash. Okay. Low Cash is a drift, is a, a drag yeah. racing guy. Um, so is uh, Teague. I don't know yeah. if you're aware Aaron. of Teague Engineering. Aaron, yeah. He's right here. He's right next door to us also. Yeah. So those guys are very, very smart on that kind of thing. And, and Low Cash is, uh, he's a MoTeC guy. So these we get a lot of smarts in our complex right here. So we are fortunate enough to be able to share a lot of information right here, which makes our job a lot easier when we're trying to figure out how to make things work. You know, we can just walk right across the parking lot and ask them, hey, man, how, do, how, how does this stuff, how, do, how is this going to happen if we do this? You know, yeah. and they say, oh, you know, well, you have to do this, and, you know, no programming involved. There's, you know, pop out the software and make it happen. That's the uh, famous VTech Alley. That's the famous VTech Alley. Yeah, yeah, those guys are alive and well here. I love it, man. Phil, I got a question for you. So how have you been able to, uh, since you keep up with the, 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 the Joneses, how have you been able to adapt to uh, social media life? Social media? Well, you know, it's uh, it's a little bit of a challenge for us old guys, you know. Um, I don't, I typically, I'm a hit and run guy, so I only do like Instagram. I used to, I used to do Facebook, but that I thought that there was a little bit too much drama yeah. on Facebook you know so i found that instagram for me was like a better a better fit because i'll just post i'll post certain things and i like i like you know what happens on instagram to where i can follow a lot of people and i don't get caught up in all the drama thing but but uh you know there's i mean i i post when i post and i don't i don't do algorithms i don't do things like that i just kind of follow if i see something in the shop that's cool as shit i just take a picture of it and i post it to instagram and and uh, i like to share information with people they'll comment on things and i i try to respond to as many people as i can yeah you know, and uh, share information because i'm not the most knowledgeable guys but i can pick their brains too you know yeah because there's so much knowledge out there on the interwebs that i can i can also learn a lot of cool things from too man i love it that you're still so hungry for knowledge yeah i mean what you know what you don't want to stagnate too damn much because um you know then that's when you kind of quit growing and i think i i think we just had larry chan in here not too long ago and he did uh uh he did a autofocus on on the garage the hoonigans and, the Hoonigans, yeah. So Larry Chen popped in here like a couple months ago, you know, and and uh, and he s said the same thing. Like, how do you how do you you know how do you do that? And I go, well, things are getting faster all the time. If you're not growing, then you're getting slower, you know. Yeah. And that's the bottom line, you know. So and not that I'm hungry to be fast, fast on track, but I'm kind of I kind of love the challenge of learning new things and making the car faster and kind of you have to keep it in, in a you know because i do have a budget i'm a i'm a retired guy i also have other interests you know so so you can't just like sink all your money into you know into one one project we kind of have other things going on too yeah so uh with this eg that you said that uh is kind of going to take the place of of the uh the other eg what are some yeah. of the things that you guys are going to do to it? Uh, the it kind of gonna it's kind of gonna go back a couple of uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, earlier earlier models of the EG where at first we were uh, stock sort of sort of a stock K twenty four K twenty four A two we did uh, you know we we kept it like pretty much all Honda we did RBC intake we did rdx injectors i went with a high tech because we tracked the car i went with a high tech back with oil pan i did the s2000 oil pump upgrade on it i run in our crew our crew uh, dan fan over there at uh, our crew has been really kind to us uh i've got an our crew header for it he designed the brake system on the on my current my the gran turismo eg very also. cool so we just kind of you know pick and choose we where it'll probably end up being another Panda AG too, because as you know, you're kind of limited when you go to a K-series car. 
you kind of look you're looking for grip and you're kind of limited on the small fenders or the what you have yeah, to work yeah, yeah. with narrow body car so the pandem the pandem kit kind of makes it uh, a lot more desirable because then I can go back to a 17 we're running 17 nine and a half wheels up to a 10 inch wide and put a lot more meat down to 245 as opposed to running like a 205 or a 225 tire definitely you know, it gives you a lot more options with grip also uh, so we're probably going to go down that same road make the chassis stiff cage it uh, but a more simple term, probably like do maybe a four point in it. Something that's a little more simple, that's a little more affordable, cheaper for us to throw in the trailer, take to the track, double dip it, you know, yes. run the shit out of it for two day, two days, double dipping it and uh, just have a ton of fun. Man. I love it, man. Fun. That's Hopefully what it's all about. That's exactly what it's about. Yeah. So and then get involved in the VTEC club and. We do a, a couple of events out in New Mexico too, where we go to a road say go out there from time to time, which is like like a hometown track, you know, that we used to go to, and just fun stuff, man, you know. Yeah. No agenda, no agenda, just random events. I love it, man. So you guys are going to uh, start coming out with uh, some apparel and accessories for the the garage. We are, we are. We've we've actually been doing that all along. We just haven't been organized enough to maybe do like uh you know like uh like an outlet to where we can actually get it to some people yeah not that not that we're we, we just kind of want to share it with people you yeah know, just definitely say, you know here, here's what garage rcr is all about take it or leave it man we'll you know we'll be happy to We'll be happy to send you some support. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that would uh, want to support and be part of the journey, man. It's uh, it's exciting, you know, what you guys have going on. We hope so because we're uh, we're uh, very connected. Like, you know, I like I like to follow a lot of you guys that are that are you know that are out there on the net and uh, kind of comment on things and like a, I like a lot of things and I'm. You know, there's so many, there's so many cool, cool things going on out there that make it easy for me through Instagram yeah. to be able to follow and see their journey as well. You know, yeah. so we have a lot of interest out there. We just kind of keep plugging away at it. Awesome, man, Phil. I, I love it, bro. You know, I was, uh, I've been looking forward to this conversation, and uh, man, I, I appreciate your outlook on life, man. It's definitely refreshing. Thanks, right? Me too, Frank. It's been it's been awesome, man. Thanks a lot for uh, taking the time to to have us on have us on the podcast, man. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course, man. Definitely. So before we get out of here, where can people follow along with the journey? Uh, well, the best place to go is my Instagram, and unfortunately, I haven't been that active on it right now. But it's Philip Philip R Robles. Got you. Uh, Philip R. Robles, and you can find it. it's like a little kanji. It, it's a uh, uh, Robles in in uh, in Spanish is oak. Uh -huh. So it's a it's a loose interpretation of a uh, kanji oak white. Uh, that's my that's my uh, you, you'll see that on my Instagram. And the other one is Jesse C. Robles. Um, so you can follow him. You know, follow him on Instagram, and he's like, you know, we'll we'll just kind of post random stuff from time to time. We appreciate you taking a look from time to time and uh sending some likes out yeah and, uh, we're saying the opposite direction man. heck yeah man make sure you guys go show them some love um awesome dynamic you guys have there you know it's just it's the dream that any uh any any car enthusiast would love to have man just to be working with the pops in the sun and just Definitely. you know that that family vibe it's awesome absolutely man congratulations man i wish you guys nothing but success Thanks a lot. Likewise, Brandon. Thank you, man. Of course. So uh, thank you guys for your time. Everybody, please, please go check them out. Do you guys have an Instagram for the shop? We do, but we just a startup. It's a garage RCR. Yeah. But it's it's we'll, we'll, we promise we'll get more active on that as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Make sure you guys follow them. And you can go to, you know, what we just said. We're so bad with that. We need to get on it. I know. Now, is but, is the shop uh, is the shop just for personal use, or do you guys do work on uh, customers' cars as well? Well, um, it uh, it kind of started off as like is is yes, just just our personal stuff, 
but then with COVID, um, uh, you know, fortunately my dad, you know, he was able to retire and all that. But uh, with me, I, I'm a bartender, so uh, I do take customer cars, like, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, um, so, yeah. So, you know, there. Yep. I love, yeah. Yep. Very cool, man. If you, I, he's, I, a, he's a smart dude. Good, damn good mechanic, man. He gets he gets stuff done. He's got that young mind to where he can he can uh, put a lot of cool shit together. I love it, man. Man, this is so awesome to talk to you guys. Guys, please, please go check them out. And if you're ever in Phoenix, uh, go swing by the uh, VTech Alley and go say hi to everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. lots of shops to come check. Out. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Frank. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate of course. Your, your time. Of course, man. I'm always here, man. And uh, I want to give a big thank you to uh, our sponsors, Heel Toe Automotive. Been around since 2002, supplying you guys with your Honda parts. Make sure you guys check them out at HeelToeAuto.com. Uh, Rywire Motorsports Electronics. Um, oh, yeah. Beast, That's man. <laughs> if you guys Good ever uh, need any wiring done. Wire, got a got wire 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 <laughs> Everybody has Rywire, man. Make sure you guys check them out at Rywire.com. And if you need a clutch, hit up Action Clutch at ActionClutch.com. Clutch is made. I'm running it. Action clutch disc. Dude, there we go. Boom. There you go. And then go it was all check, purchased check. at Heel Toe. Heel Toe check. Yep. Heel Toe. Yep. Man, Heel toe. I love check it, guys. Wire harness. Good, good stuff. Love it, man. Yeah. Hey, until we could see you guys in person again. I, I want to try to make it out to Phoenix. RC goes every other yeah, weekend, so too. I might just uh, sneak out with him one of these days and we could uh, hang out at the shop. Beer, we'll, Love to have you. Oh, yeah. we'll do man thank you guys and thank you guys for listening make sure you guys check out the um check out the shop um have all the instagrams and everything listed below you guys got to check out this eg if you guys never seen it it's awesome man but uh thank you guys for listening it's downtime with downstar episode 202 and we're out peace